Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I thought I'd do a, a little bit of a different backdrop today and uh, do it from inside my conservatory. It makes a little bit of change and at least I won't get any uh, comments about needing some photos in my frames, which I still don't have by the way. So I wanted a couple, I wanted to cover a couple of things today. Uh, I wanted to do a, a, an update on the heavy lifting vessel that was got into trouble in, off the coast of Norway recently. Um, just to update that the vessel was recovered and it was towed by a salvage team, Schmidt Salvage. You might remember them from Suez Canal. And it was towed into a port, which, whose name I cannot pronounce, so I'll put it up on the screen. So it was saved. And so that's a good end to the story. All the crew was saved and the vessel was saved too. There was some damage to some of the vessels that were on board as they got banged about. The, uh, the green vessel that fell off, that vessel was also recovered by a salvage team. That brings me on to another point. Uh, in the first video I made about this subject, I mentioned uh, what is a yacht transporter, and I talked about a semi-submersible uh, yacht transporter. I wasn't trying to say that the vessel that got into trouble was that type of vessel, although it did, it did seem to come across that way in the video. I was just talking about that particular yacht transporter because it led me on to the story of the one that got into trouble in Palma. So the one that was actually in trouble was a heavy lifting vessel. I did try to correct it in the comments, but it didn't stop 100 people from correcting it as well by telling me that it was a heavy lifting vessel. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, that fact. Another thing that a lot of comments were was why didn't they use the lifeboat? So it's, it's very difficult to sort of say exactly what happened and why. But one of the things that I noticed is, first of all, they're on the vessel. The vessel got into trouble. They've contacted search and rescue. Search and rescue have said we've dispatched helicopters, right? So I don't know. We don't know. None of us know, except for the people on board, know what the time frame was between that happening. Now, when they were told that they were going to be airlifted, the best place to do that is on an open space on the vessel and um, so they went to the stern of the ship and they waited to be rescued. Now after the, after the winch man rescued the first person, he probably deemed it was quite dangerous because of the way the ship was moving around. As you can see in the video, it was absolutely horrendous weather. And the winch man stands a chance of getting banged against the vessel or if he's got somebody, if he's, if he's tied onto somebody else, they both stand the chance of being banged around. So they probably made the decision on the fly to tell the rest of the, of the crew to jump in the water one by one and they'd be pulled out of the water because it's more safe to do so in the water. So if the water suddenly raises or if, you know, if the, if the, the helicopter moves and, and, they, and, they get, and the winchman's going to get banged around, at least he's going to get banged around in the water and not against the steel hull of a vessel. Uh, why, why they never abandoned ship at the beginning? I would say that they were probably safer where they were than in that little boat in those high seas. Also, to, you have to remember that if, they, if the vessel did sink and they hadn't abandoned ship in that lifeboat, that when the ship sank, the lifeboat would be freed from the vessel and it would pop up to the surface. So if they were able to, they could still get inside of it. But at that point in time, they probably deemed that it was safer to do to be airlifted from the vessel. Now this leads me on to the the, the actual title of this video, which is if, if the vessel's abandoned, are you entitled to keep that vessel if you rescue it, if you salvage it from the sea and you tow it into port? Well, every country has its own rules on this, but there is an international rule and they're all generally follow the international rule, which it is, and it says here that uh, the law of salvage is a principle of marine law, whereby any person who helps recover another person's ship or cargo in peril at sea is entitled to award commensurate with the value of the property salvaged. Okay, then it goes on to say that the vessel must be in peril, either immediate or forthcoming, the salver, the person that's doing the salvage, must be acting voluntarily and under no pre-existing contract, and the salver must be successful in their efforts, though payment for partial success may be granted if the environment is protected. So basically what that means is, is if I abandon my ship, 
my ship is now open to salvage. So if a salvage uh, vessel is close by and they sail up and they know they've got no contract with anybody and they salvage that vessel, they're entitled to either keep the vessel or the company that owns the vessel will pay them a value commensurate, in other words, in the same ballpark as what that vessel is worth. In, this, in the case of Schmidt, I, I believe, but I'm not sure if anybody knows, put it in the comments, I believe that Schmidt were hired by the owner of the vessel to go and salvage it. So in that circumstance, they're under contract, so they're not entitled to that contract for the vessel. So they will be paid by the, the company that hired them to salvage the vessel. So basically, when you, when you once that vessel is abandoned by the master, it has to be master's, because the only person who can de declare abandoned ship is the master of the vessel. If the master of the vessel declared abandoned ship and the ship has been abandoned, then providing you're not under contract to do so by, by the company that owns it, you can salvage that vessel and claim money to the value of the vessel. So very interesting. It does change based on different laws, but generally they all follow that um, maritime law. So yeah, so that's it. Very interesting. That's why you have these companies out there that do this, that do this kind of salvage. All right, guys, I hope this has uh, answered any questions that you may have had. And um, also uh, I wanted to say that the, the vessel, did I say at the beginning, the vessel was recovered and it was, and it was towed into port and you can still see it in these photos um, in port and still listing over to one side. So obviously there is um, cargo inside the vessel that has pushed the vessel over. That's what uh, the way it looks to me, that the vessel is still listing even though it's in port, which suggests that, which is the reason why they abandoned in the first place, because the cargo moved and um, caused the vessel to list over. And the fact that the, the boats fell off and it's still listing says that it wasn't the boats that caused it. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.